Now we should be good. Okay, so Mitch said we want to talk more about uh, what we were discussing last week. Is there anything else anyone wants to add to the last minute so we know how much time to spend on this? Is Squat's meeting or is Squat's topic for today? I remember the Slack conversation happened a couple of weeks ago. Um, not sure if it's just not getting popped onto the stack when we were creating the new, um, the new day, the new entry for each meeting. I can talk now. Um, yeah, we didn't have time to talk last week. I think that makes sense. It looks like we don't have Louis with us this morning, and he was pretty heavily involved in the forward proxy conversation. So I don't know that we would want to necessarily decide without him present, if possible. Go for it, Kuai. Yeah, so let me um, explain the context. So this is about sidecar to ambient data path. And right now, when you when you make a request to a pod within ambient from a sidecar, it automatically resolves to waypoint. And this is done by basically pre-resolving waypoints for a pod within control plane and then picking the first one. So that that's sort of where it started from. So I tried to change that. I tried to use pod directly instead of going to waypoint from the sidecar. And that didn't work. So uh, there's basically two questions. You know, One, why doesn't it work? And second, do we actually want this to happen for the waypoint resolving in sidecars? I feel like if we do that, then we also have all sorts of lifecycle management issues in Sidecar going on, because now that Waypoint is visible to clients, you can't just you know, upgrade it without also doing something in the clients. Well, if, you just, if it wasn't visible to clients and it's only managed by Z tunnels, you could automate a lot of the management for the Waypoints without necessarily uh, you know, requiring clients to participate in that. Yeah, so it's basically two questions is why why can't Sidecar talk to the pod directly? And second is why should it not talk to the to the pods directly? Why does it have to resolve waypoints? Yeah, I understand so there's a there's a there's a performance uh, improvement, right? I, I guess you're gonna say that. It's because when you go to the waypoint directly instead of being captured by a Z tunnel, you skip one hop. But I don't think it's it's worth it's worth it for the simple migration use case because this is unlike anything else. And having optimization for a single use case is just too much additional work. Yeah, but, I can answer why it doesn't work. Um, there is this like specific code that explicitly blocks this that I wrote, so I have some context on that. Uh, the reason why was because we didn't need it, and it's fairly complicated to implement, and it was thought to be better to be strict now, and we can loosen it up later if we need to. That was kind of the motivation. Why it's complicated is because we need to hairpin, and we need the original identity. So we can't terminate the TLS. So we actually need to hairpin it before we even terminate the TLS, just based on kind of TCP proxy, um, which is not crazy complex, but it's <clears throat> you know completely new new logic, completely different flow from any other request. Um, we can't really apply off the Z on it, although I don't think we do anyways for waypoint traffic today, but we yeah, we could in the future. Um, so it's not things that aren't workaroundable, um, but that's yeah, that's how it was implemented. So I guess you're saying that we can't terminate TLS. Why can't we terminate TLS and just propagate that entity on Z tunnel? Z tunnel is not trusted. So if we did that, then any Z tunnel could just say that they were anyone, and there's no way the waypoint would know. 
when you say ZTunnel is not trusted, it's trusted to be the identities that run on its node. Is that? Yeah, I mean, this would mean that the waypoint would get a request from any ZTunnel, and that ZTunnel could say that they're any identity, and it would have to believe it, um, which violates the trust model. Well, we don't have to believe it. We need to verify it. So we can still do a check that you know, whoever they claim is, I mean, it, we have a map of node to ports somewhere. No, but it's not even the same node. This is a one node calling a second node where the tunnel is, and then sending that to a third node where the waypoint is. They're completely, there's no info about the original source. But that can be, can be solved. I mean, that, that's the whole point here is that we need to have a chain of trust. I mean, each link is mutually authenticated and you trust the one in front of you. And right, that's the whole point is we don't want to trust the ZTunnel. Why should we allow the ZTunnel to say that they're anyone that they want? No, 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 not anyone. Anyone who is on the same pod with the ZTunnel. But same not, with the ZTunnel. not the identity we're trying to propagate though. We have a client, yeah, okay. a client to ZTunnel to Waypoint, right? Yeah. The ZTunnel would say, would delegate for a client, right? Yes. But client is not, these are not on the same node. These are on two completely different nodes. The client can be that, out that, of that, client. that doesn't work. That doesn't work. So, yeah. so, so what needs to be to happen is a pod ID of the client or the IP of the client needs to be associated with the with the Z tunnel. Both of them need to have the same node ID basically. So that's, that's a check that waypoint should make always. It's the same thing we're doing in NCA when we're issuing certificates. I, I feel like what you're saying, Costin, is the client should go directly to the waypoint. Is that not the case? Or that no, we should no, have no, no, no. no, I'm not saying that. They should be there. So, okay, this model was client to server sidecar. Are you saying that the we should have this? Yeah. Okay, I feel like this is... It just feels weird, like we have an application and then we say that we don't want to put all the logic in the app, so we put it in the sidecar. And then we have the sidecar and we say, this logic's too hard, we don't want to put it in the sidecar. So we then put it on the node proxy. And we have all three of these things. It feels very redundant. Like why why would we put it on the node Z tunnel? Oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, I get your point. So the client has a sidecar, basically it's proxyless. Now, it honestly, it might be easier to implement that way because it's hard to implement the waypoint part in Envoy, but it seems like a pretty big architectural change to support Envoy limitations. Uh, it, yeah, can I add? So I don't think this is Envoy limitation. It's just we'll have to manage lifecycle of waypoints in both sidecars and Z tunnels. That's a lot of complexity in two places. And also gRPC. I, I don't even know how the gRPC is going to work here. I'm not sure how you're going to do life cycle of waypoints in gRPC. Why is it harder to manage the life cycle of waypoints, but not for every other pod in the cluster? Like, what's special about a waypoint? Uh, upgrades. You need to be able to drain it and upgrade waypoints without okay. upgrading applications. So that means every client of waypoints has to support uh, managed upgrades of waypoints. But isn't that the same for any application? I mean, a waypoint's not really special. It's just another application we need to forward to. Why is it any different? A uh, waypoint is special because it's supposed to be part of infrastructure. It's not application. It's part of infrastructure. You're not supposed to see it. And we only see it in sidecars. Once you see it, you have to manage it. And that's the problem. But I I don't see how that impacts how Envoy or the client's management happens. Like, why does Envoy care whether it's infrastructure or, or not? It's all the same whether it, how it sends traffic to something, isn't it? Uh, well, because it affects the life cycle of communications, right? I mean, imagine you're a sidecar and you want to have a day-long post connect uh, request, and suddenly you have to do this waypoint thing that has to upgrade every eight hours, and it's just in, you know, it interferes. Like ZTunnel can can upgrade waypoints without disrupting connections. 
Waypoint cannot do that. Uh, Sidecar cannot do that because it sees Waypoint directly. Why can a Z-Tunnel do it, but Sidecar can't? They're both just... Because Z-Tunnel will use something like Mask, so it will be L3 level. So you can not, you can, yeah. you don't have to interrupt connections. That's not, that's not how it, how it works or is designed. I mean, gateways... It get, should, right? We start that all the time. It's not nothing special about that. It, you have, you know, egress gateways, you have, you know, ingress gateways on the other side with, with uh, but I think, I think someone has a hand up, sorry. I was just going to say, like, this is conceptually a little bit similar in my mind to the discussions about removing uh, <clears throat> the H-bone termination from, like, gateways, except it's more client side. Um, I don't know if that helps anyone, like, conceptualize it, but it's a, a little bit similar to, like, the, the sandwich discussions that we've, we've considered. Um, it keeps that H-bone logic out of Envoy somewhat. Um, yeah, but this would be the client sidecar. So unless we have a sandwich on the sidecar as well, then... Yeah, 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 absolutely. Client, it's, yeah. it's client side open face sandwich. Yeah, and to uh, cost out a question, server, Z-Tunnel co-located with Waypoint. Um, in general, we should assume that, I mean, obviously there's cases where they happen to be co-located, but in general, there's three nodes. There's the client, node, the waypoint node, and the server node. There's no even attempts at making them prefer co-location. So basically, that's client sidecar needs to go to waypoint, because otherwise, when I mean, you cannot go to server, then we are going back to the hairpinning. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could do it. Like, you could do the hairpinning, but you have four hops instead of three hops, or I don't yeah, know. We, we just agreed hop. that we don't want to do hairpinning anymore in the previous meeting, so let's not go back to that. Let's stick with that. Um, um, Jay had a comment earlier. Is it worth solving the downside as well? An extra hop for the proxy. I think it's more complicated and an extra hop to go to not have the awareness on the client side. Um, but even if it was just an extra hop, like, you know, we're, we're building the next generation service mesh. We should probably do it efficiently. It's not like there's fundamental limitations. There's just a bit of complexity, right? Uh, well, for me, the way I see it, the problem is that now that for a client to truly participate in the mesh, it now has to be aware of so many things. It has to be aware of waypoints. It has to be aware of the life cycle of waypoints. It has to know the IPs of waypoints. And it has to load balance properly. And that's just too much to ask. So it means. You can't have a client that is not speaking Edgebone, that is not connected to STOD, that is not cannot uh, upgrade tunnels. Yep. That's a lot to ask for any participant in the mesh, right? Yeah, I actually 100% agree with, with that concern in sentence. I just don't think that the solution to that is to defer this to the Z-Tunnel. Um, I don't know if you were here last week, but we talked a lot about changing uh, the waypoints to be kind of service oriented. And I think that would meet your concerns. Um, obviously it's a big change for a lot of other reasons. So. I, I mentioned in the, in the chat, uh, the new DNS HTTPS records and, and the ECDH stuff that is going on. Uh, it's very relevant here because it's all about clients, browser, whatever, you know, having an authority or a destination and then sending the request and modifying this and everything else to go to a different destination. Yeah, it's CH, but the, the other side of CH, which is uh, DNS records that make a CH work. Uh, I think it's unavoidable that clients will need to be able to have different ways to get information about if I want to reach this destination, I need to go to something, which could be an ECDH gateway, could be an egress gateway, could be an east-west gateway, could be a waypoint, could be a regular gateway. So I don't think we can avoid it, and I don't think it will ever be one way to, to reach the destination. And then we will need to support it, because then we you know different roles as egress gateway, or everything else, we need to support ECH and, and other things that, that involve redirecting or, or rerouting to a particular you know, standard-based uh, gateway. So 
So I guess the way I understand is that each bond plus a protocol requires Istio ID, right? Because otherwise you cannot find out if it's a waypoint. And you cannot send your principal information about it without knowing this is a waypoint. No, no, no. It, it can have any ID. It can be a DLS proxy. I mean, it can be any. Because that's the whole idea was of page one was you could use any infrastructure you want so as long as uh, you can figure out the, the certificate and sign that it exposes. It's not required even to be an issue component. It could be anything. Well, yeah, I don't know the impact of ECH. I mean, it might. I don't. I don't really see how it makes things different. It just makes things less visible to middlemen. But, 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 uh, I, but region, well, I know the DNS delegation and post delegation, right? But it's not. It's not particularly relevant here because, uh, I mean, H bomb doesn't use ECH. We don't do DNS delegation. We don't do any delegation, as far as I know. We, we don't support ECH yet. At some point, we might or might not. But my point was not about encrypting this. And I was about the fact that DNS or some other discovery service may tell you, may tell the client that you don't go directly and use the destination, but you may go via a waypoint gateway, egress, whatever. CDN, any other things. I mean, it's, it's something we, it will come. It's not uh, something we can avoid. Well, I see. So you're saying that the control plane is going to be required for each one. It's just not going to be STOD. It's going to be some more like DNS record somewhere. Is that what you're trying to say? Or? Definitely, definitely will be at some point. People will start asking for ECH and, and then probably control plane will need to be able to, to represent that. And that's identical with what we're doing at Waypoint in, in practice. I mean, it's we're telling the client, you must, in order to connect to this destination, you must go via some particular, you know, CDN or particular also with this particular characteristics. Well, I, I would prefer if we phrase the protocol in that sense, rather than saying that you must have a connection, XDS connection to STOD, because it's not clear where you find STOD in general, and you know what's the trust of STOD and what, how is the you know custody of tra trust chain is. Yeah, is enforced. I completely agree, and that's why it's important to study what the DNS because DNS is completely untrusted, and yet they have they managed to get the solution that apparently works. And we'll have to integrate with them because we'll start seeing more and more servers using it. I mean, I, I know Cloudflare announced, and probably others will do us. I don't So, Costin, uh, you've used the term HBOM clients a lot in this conversation, and, and I'm not quite following what we mean by that. Do we simply mean the sidecar, or are we using that phrase HBOM clients to indicate that there may be more clients than just the sidecar? Any browser uh, application that has that supports the HTTP proxy protocol or anything is an HBOM client. So pretty much all application is all they have the option of curl minus minus proxy. You are a HBOM client when you just connect. It's not completely working today, but theoretically it should work because again, that's a protocol. It's, it's a standard protocol. That's why you use connect in order to interoperate on both sides with arbitrary infrastructure. So the idea here would be very similar to what we were able to do with sidecarless gRPC where the application so, actually so, manages some of the HBone logic? Yes, proxyless, uh, any, any you know, current client should be able to be act as a, as a, as a client, as a able client. OK, do we have a design doc for what, what that will look like? I think that was originally end up from Louis. That, that's... Yeah, that, like, I mean, the, the, like, that's just protocol selection, Mitch. Right? I mean, it, what kind of design doc are you looking for? Or like, are you looking for proof of concept of some other type of client? Because as Kostin mentioned, right, that the proof of concept would be curl, right? If we want to show that working, we probably have some things to fix, but we could show it working. I'd like to show show it in test in particular, like have an automated test that that checks this, and to try to help. Like, I'm trying to wrap my head around the advantages. I can I can hear what those advantages are. I think. Um, but 
I want to make sure I understand our objectives with this. Right. So the, the cost is correct, right? The, the, the reason that we chose the protocol we did was interop with existing infrastructure, right? Whether it's, you know, an edge CDN or curl or a library in Java, right? That at least there's the possibility of working with those things. We haven't focused on proving that they work because, well, we have enough fish to fry right now, but we were very careful in the protocol choice to sh to reserve that possibility. Now, to Quad's question, like it won't work right now because we don't have XDS. That's not really true, right? We just need to pass more parameters statically. Like you can always do with X manually what you can do with XDS, right? All we're trying to demonstrate is the protocol proof point. Right? Not 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 trying to say that the protocol has to solve waypoint discovery, for instance. That's a different problem. XDS is just one way of solving that, right? DNS is another, manually is another. And, it's a proxy you know, config, it's just JSON, J J JavaScript yeah. that we all love in, in our processor. If you check your processor yeah. setting for any core. Checking, checking in a file is a yeah. way to do this. But the, the ownership is very different. I mean, the waypoint is a server property. Every, every server will have its own waypoint in the worst case. So it's, it's, a, it's a big dynamic change you have to be aware of our clients. Every client will have been, to know about every server's waypoint. Most, most of the interrupt cases are not like east-west, we think, right? We think most of the interrupt cases are like ingress. Right. You're going to go through a gateway. Mesh is special, right? Because it's a whole network. It's not just a service. An interrupt is going to matter more in a more distributed environment and therefore is more likely to go through an ingress. So I don't think like interop between curl and waypoints is the primary concern. It's not so much to talk about the discovery, it's the fact that we need to distribute this information in a peer-to-peer -peer way in a network for it to be a mesh. To be a mesh, protocol. right. But a lot of the use cases yes. are not mesh, right? Like when it's mesh, we deal with all the detail. When it's not mesh, but it's still interrupt, we don't. Well, go for ingress is always a solution, I agree. Is that, but I think my original concern is about the mesh, the flat sense. So it's it's it is no ingress to go through. And that means you have to scale yeah, your so, config size of the size of the mesh, which is a problem. Right. So so today we've made the determination for mesh use cases, right? The only discovery mechanisms we're currently supporting are XDS based. We can decide if we want to add another, but right now that's all we're doing. Uh, yes, but it, it that is very poorly specified. And I think... Sure, like we could write that down somewhere, um, but that is what we're doing. Does anyone... Uh, well, I, I understand everything is XDS in Istio. So that, that the sort of, we need to make sure what, what part of XDS and how exactly you discover? Like we don't have a specific waypoint discovery service. We have a it's somewhere in the endpoint, some annotation somewhere. It it, it is very difficult to write a client that can replace. I I, I agree. Uh, like WDS is a much better waypoint discovery API than EDS. It's EDS. Like that's technically very very common. Like I wouldn't implement, like if we were going to implement DNS, right? I mean, if, right. So you want to discovery service, which of those two APIs would you use to back it? I wouldn't use CDS and EDS. I'd use WDS. Well, back to Kostin's point, why why are we not using something more industry standard like ECH? Why are we inventing a new XDS protocol for things that already sort of, sort of can be solved via are, like are, ECH? Are you, are you talking about using ECH for redirection? No, the DNS, the DNS, uh, the DNS records for uh, your HTTPS records and all the other new stuff, which allows. Kind of same stuff. Oh, okay. But that's early. I mean, they just, you know, got approved. You know, recently. It's not 
Yeah. Okay. Not change the problem. Both of them work in the same way. Not okay, so that's still, but that's still that's that's still DNS, right? Like so. Yeah. So what what we're what we're saying is, and I think my statement still holds. If we're going to implement DNS, and I guess that includes support for ECH, we would still use WDS to back it. Well, you can. What do you mean to back it? As a like, a, you, you don't have so to know about WGS if you use DNS, right? Like, you, you just have a discovery set of information. You have a multiple different ways of exposing it, right? You can have one be a proxy for the other. Both are fine. WDS probably has better performance ergonomics than DNS, right? Because of its push capabilities and subscribe capabilities for clients. But if you needed to support DNS, we could absolutely implement it. I'm just suggesting WDS is a good backing API for an implementation of DNS. We could flip it. Yes. So I think it matters in the sense that we we want protocols that are standard, not not Istio inventions. And when we say HBON is just HTTP Connect, that is half proof because you know you need to know waypoints, and that's part of the protocol. You cannot connect without knowing waypoints. No, no, no. Waypoints are not part of the protocol. You have to be very careful when you say that, Cor. That is not true. Waypoints are part of the mesh. They are not part of the protocol. The protocol is a is a is a method to connect and communicate, and mm -hmm. that means you need to be able to figure out from beginning how to connect. That means you need to discover waypoints. So the the client has to has to be aware. You, can, you, you you can do that manually. Like, can you connect using HTTPS, HTTPS today without using DNS? The answer is absolutely yes. You have to do a lot of work manually to do it, but you can absolutely do it. DNS is not part of HTTP. Right? So it's not part of the protocol, just like WDS is not part of HBone. Well, OK, I, 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 I agree, yeah. So yeah. HTTP protocol is HTTP connect, but client Mesh is not just H bomb. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Yes. So I, I mean, do we want to put together a concrete proposal about how to use quote unquote better DNS or more evolved DNS to support the mesh more completely? Or, or do we feel like we need that right now? I, I agree. More standard is better. But I, I think what we need is to ship ambient in yeah, a busy configuration, make it work, and then worry about uh, getting browsers connected. Yes, from a product perspective, I think that's probably what's a fair statement. So that's what's keeping I, users up. Let, let me backtrack a bit. I mean, my original concern about having waypoint in the explicit waypoint address is, is lifecycle management of waypoints becomes more complicated. We becomes visible to all clients, so you can't just you know upgrade it without knowing all the clients that use it already. So it's already kind of ruled out some ways to automate management. And I'm not sure it's, it's worth the cost because the only the only place we actually do that is just sidecar. Like the only reason this whole conversation started is that Sidecars have to resolve waypoints. Everything, all other clients don't have to resolve waypoints. Well, that that's a trick of the Z tunnel, right? Correct. Yeah. So, so the the, the, the side, client the side, sidecars could rely on the same trick. We just haven't done that work. Like we could sandwich the sidecar with the Z tunnel. Yes, Absolutely could that's happen. exactly what I'm trying to argue. Is that I think it's not worth having this uh, waypoint visible become part of the standard if we can just hide it and then, you know discuss it later when we have better in a better position and instead just use a sandwich solution and delegate the identity. Um, so so that, that's a very fair question, right? Um, like, uh, like I know we've focused more or like, talked more about the waypoint sandwich. We haven't really talked about the sidecar sandwich in detail. Um, is that something we want to spend some cycles on? 
Like it definitely offers some advantages in terms of configuration complexity and things like that. I'm sure you have thoughts. Uh, I don't mind. Uh, I don't mind a sidecar sandwich, uh, actually. But uh, I, I, what, what I want to make clear is that sidecars or 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 uh, or anything will need to be able to honor east-west gateways. That's a case we support and probably want to support in the future. But we cannot avoid it too much. So anyway, uh, east-west gateways are identical to waypoints. It's basically control plane telling you that in order to reach a particular destination, we need to go to a waypoint. Gateway or east west or ingress or whatever. So that's that's kind of a core feature of history that we had for a long time. So I'm typically not super involved in the low level stuff uh, and I'm struggling to keep up with this conversation. I don't want to slow down the entirety of the conversation, but experience tells me that when I don't understand what we're talking about, sometimes that may mean that others in the room also are not able to follow the conversation. If that's the case, it would be helpful to have diagrams or docs that we can refer to to demonstrate the different concepts that we're talking about um, so that even I can keep up. Yeah, I had written some stuff and I think we covered some of it, but to answer one of your earlier questions, which I could go over, um, which I think was about like, what are we what are we talking about with interop? And like, yeah, the obvious case, like in East Coast sidecars, you have sidecars. The sidecars is it happens to be TLS, which is kind of a standardish protocol um, and it's kind of opaque and maybe we could have invented completely arbitrary East Geo protocol and it's fine. But there are cases where things that are not Eastio wants to talk to Eastio, right? Uh, Proxyless gRPC is one example. Like they added non-envoy sidecars to the mesh. Um, they could be a lot lighter weight than Proxyless gRPC, though. Like you could just mount a certificate, hook it up to your application, and use that there. And you may want to do that maybe on a VM or something where it's even harder to get a sidecar um, or something like that. Or where you're not even in a normal environment, you're like a cloud load balancer or something, and now you want to start communicating directly to the mesh. The harder, the more bespoke the protocol, the harder that is to sell, right? If it's just TLS, most backends can do TLS. That's quite easy. If we had an East Geo protocol, it's probably a hard sell. Like Google, maybe we could pull it off. I doubt you'd ever see that AWS though, for example. Uh, you may also see some like, I don't know, but maybe Lambda wants to be able to talk to the mesh. Like, again, like you're not gonna implement East Geo in Lambda, but they maybe implement TLS. And there's kind of a sliding scale. Like in East Geo sidecars, you could kind of do it with the quirk that you either had to set a custom AOPN or use strict mode. Um, but if you did that, then you could just use curl with just a certificate. The one kind of catch though is, you know, when you curl google.com, the certificate is for google.com. So it's easy to verify because it's all, although it's not part of the protocol as we mentioned, the DNS and certificate validation are all kind of linked in and you usually treat them as one bucket. But with Spiffy, that's not the case. So you have to know how to bound the identity you want or just don't verify it. You also may want to actually know that they support MTLS, otherwise you may just be sending it to a black hole. But you know, you can do it. Um, there's some other meshes too that don't use the ALPN thing, so it makes things a little bit easier, although they compromise um, in other areas. So with HMON, it's I would say it's almost as good. Um, you know, it's a standard protocol. A lot of things can support Connect. Um, by, you know, curl Chrome we used. Although H2 support in those is fairly new, but we can add H1 support into Eastio. We have an open PR to do that. It's not, you know, uh, super hard to do that and there's standards to negotiate and whatnot. Um, but the full Eastio using HMON to connect to an Eastio ambient mesh, like Quad was mentioning, is quite a bit more challenging because it's not just the protocol, right? You can't send to the service anymore because now we're sending to this different port. So you actually have to be able to do the service to pod resolution yourself, uh, which probably means you need some control plane. And you need to know to send to the waypoint because otherwise your request is going to reject it. And you have to know the waypoint's identity now because it's different than the backend's identity, which maybe you somehow found out before, but you know now you need to do this as well. 
Um, so it, it gets, you know, we have at the protocol level, I don't think it's interoperability issues. It's the issues with all the knowledge you need to do to actually fully participate in the mesh. Um, if we tie this back to last week where we're talking about service oriented waypoints, like instead of calling workload and then having to know that when you call that workload, you need to go through the waypoint, all the waypoint, right? Any client can do a DNS request and then send an HTTPS request to some load balancer and verify a DNS certificate. Like that's that's not waypoint special, that's just how load balancers work. Like we can make waypoints do that. And then it would be exceedingly easy to interop with the waypoints and service mesh, right? Uh, there'd be nothing specific to East Joe or, or weird um, there. So for these non-Istio clients, how do they provision their client credentials? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I would say on the last part that I was talking about with the service waypoint, in theory, you don't need an identity, a client certificate to connect to a waypoint. Now, the, the waypoint may reject all non-identified requests if they want. That's valid configuration, but they could allow, um, allow without. If they want the identity, though, yeah, if, then that's whatever, that's up to them. I mean, there's there's easier ways to get a cert in a pod in Kubernetes than the full service mesh. If you're off of it, there's plenty of ways, but that's, yeah, that's kind of on them, so. That's fine. I'm just trying to sort of understand what's what's our problem versus somebody else's problem. So that, that's a helpful answer. Yeah, like we could do a better job at helping pods get certificates without the full Istio. Like we actually do this in Prometheus. We try and give it a certificate, but we don't use Envoy, and we do a a very hacky job. Um, but you know, it's it's mostly outside of our our scope. I would say. Thank you. They'll probably add it to Kubernetes core. By the way, there's some proposals, in you know five to ten years. Right. Hey, we got real sidecars, so anything can happen in Kubernetes at this point. That's true. A, a day late and a dollar short, though, perhaps, Mitch. <laughs> Both self manager, self manager is quite popular because almost everyone is to get an admin certificate, and they can also issue any kind of other certificate. So it's and it's relatively easy to use, and it's covered. people have figured it out how to use it. Yeah, and, and the truth is, like big enterprises are going to dictate that anyway. Right. Like, the, like that's a, a choice that they make out of their central security teams. And then it's whatever infrastructure is going to enable that distribution. Which we definitely don't control, right? Like 100 percent we don't control that. Keith? Yeah, I've been ruminating on the you know, a, a lot of the different pieces of this conversation. And it seems to me that maybe a an underlying goal maybe that's maybe not been completely clear uh with, with ambient has, has essentially been to make mesh as a concept less meshy um that does that makes no sense that's a <laughs> let me try that again uh if the goal is to, to make mesh less of a, uh, it's been a, already been a long week, it's Wednesday, it's already been a long week. But it feels like the goal has been to make mesh less of this walled garden, where in order to participate in the mesh, you have to have access to the, to, to very specific information and use that information in very specific ways. And the whole conversation we just had around the, you know, does an H-Bone client have to know about waypoints? Is I think a, a, a fundamental example of, of that of that tension, right? Um, you can participate in the protocol all you want to. Uh, I think even with uh, John's, uh, uh, he was putting in the in the doc with the uh, in Sacramento, you can you can spoof your AOPN all you want to, but to actually participate in mesh connectivity to be this mesh thing, it's more than just having the right TLS certificate. It's about knowing how all the sausage is getting made in all the various places in the mesh. You have to be aware of implementation detail. And it seems like with the HBone protocol and, and separating out mesh transport, one of the maybe stretch goals of Ambient is to, is to lower that walled garden a bit 
in order to make it so that the protocol can just be the way you interact with this mesh thing. And we can reduce all of the implementation detail and uh, yeah, reduce the implementation detail and make it so that as long as you can talk, just use H1 as an example, as long as you can speak HTTP connect and present the correct certificate and have that off, you can be a fully realized mesh participant, mesh participant. Now, does ICOD and the ICO project uh, and the control plane make optimizations and maybe add on some uh, features for things that only ICOD can know about and do? Sure, absolutely. That's kind of the fundamental, um, I, I expect that for a full for, for, for project. But I think what's powerful here is kind of similar to what made Kubernetes super powerful, it's the ability to extend it with, with CRDs. It's the ability, okay, now I'll just fall apart a little bit here, but the ability to, to, to take anything, take a Raspberry Pi sitting in my sitting in my office and allow it to talk to the mesh um, and make that a realistic capability. I think that's really the pain point that a lot of customers are experiencing. They just want the ability to to to, to get this MTLS and to not and to have some of these features that we we're talking about with the really just the Z tunnel that the L4 basic transport connectivity um, and not have to worry about all of the complexities of control plane distribution, XDS, on the, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, maybe, maybe that makes sense, but it, it's something that occurred to me listening to the kind of the back and forth about uh, of the previous conversation. Yeah, that kind of, I, I agree. And that kind of ties into how we started our conversation yes, last week that like, I feel like we keep coming up with all these hard, complex, weird questions because of architectural decisions that we made. And the solution is not to pile on more and more complex hacks and tricks to work around them, but to kind of rethink and stop making more East two islands and start using, you know, more standards. Um, I want to I want to be careful though, John, not to conflate that with the difference between workload and service. Right. I mean, right. Istio has to do workload, right? Like we can debate whether waypoints have to do workload, but Z tunnel has to do workload. Right. We use the same protocol for all those things. That is true. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, we are absolutely trying to enable interrupt. Like we could say, like the only way to interrupt with a mesh is to use HBone and to talk to ingress or waypoint. Right, because we make no guarantees about your ability to talk to workload. If you want to talk to workloads, you got to be in the mesh, right? And there's always a fuzzy definition about what that means. Um, some of this is about conserved value, Keith, right? Because like there's all that that range of possibilities, and we're like doing a lot of work to to make it possible to do them, but we're not doing the work to enable them right now, right? Because we have a fairly narrow focus in terms of execution. So what we're doing is, and then a group is saying, look, we know that that value exists. We're trying to conserve it. So when we do want to deliver it, we don't have to go and redo everything again. And, and, and maybe at Permitch's point, it would be nice to show one other example, no matter how trivial, just to demonstrate that for the simplest, least complete, least complex integration point like ingress or an east-west gateway, something, something, all I have to know is DNS and the CR assert, like John said, uh, just to prove the point. Whether that's, who we're trying to prove that point to, I think is more the question right now. I don't think we're trying to prove that point to the, the Raspberry Pi owner, maybe. Um, so I'd like to see some discussion about who maybe is, who we'd like to be proving that point to and for what use case. Like, is it browser? Is it a mobile app? Is it a library? I suspect browser is a pretty good use case, right? Like, maybe like something in JavaScript, having a TCP end-to-end -end connection with security, like easy to set up working through some typical CDN. 
browser or egress proxy. I mean, almost all companies have this small proxies to make sure you do all these ah. to sites, not the websites. So uh, that's a very common requirement in many organizations. Egress proxy is a lot different, though. It's easier to interact with no. egress than ingress because you can negotiate the protocol. I and mean, we can support every egress protocol. Just connect. I mean, just one egress protocol. <laughs> that's a standard for egress proxies. Yeah. So I understand I that the question at hand is really about how the routing part of our L4 logic makes it to these non-Istio HBone clients. They can negotiate the security portion themselves, and that's relatively simple. But understanding particularly where to route the traffic, especially when there's a waypoint being injected, adds some complexity. Is that right? Well, well I think I'm saying that's not a use case that we have to support or document. All right, pick a much more static example of discovery and demonstrate the interoperability value for that. Because the, the more dynamic examples are the much more internal ones. And our recommendation there is go use Z-Tunnel, go use the mesh. Well, and that's kind of what I was going to ask is Z-Tunnel is already modifying network namespaces on the node in order to capture traffic in and out of pods. Would it not be possible for the Z-Tunnel to intercept that as soon as it comes into the node and route it properly? All the all the traffic actually needs before it hits Z tunnel is the the credentials encryption, right? So I'm not not quite sure really what the meaningful difference is to an end user between those two things. Okay. Funny thing is, uh, yes, it works only if the application it's initiating a plain text HTTP connection or HTTP connection. If the application happens to do any TLS, in particular, if they are smart and start doing ECH and other things. We're out in the dark because we no longer have any information relevant to us. So I was scared about this CTH for quite a while because it breaks a lot of stuff in in, in Istio and in meshes. You know, SNI routing, a lot of other things are, are becoming far more complicated. Yeah. Again, right. Mostly the static, like statically discoverable server slash DNS use cases for external cluster. Internal stuff, Mitch, like Sox proxy, which we already support in Z-Tunnel, is a much more pragmatic solution. So it, it, it feels to me like we, there, there's, I think we answered the original question a while ago about why does the client sidecar have to know about waypoints? It does seem to me, at least, that there is action item see there's an action item here that potentially coincides with the service oriented waypoint discussion um and ben and i've kind of had this aside in the in, in the comments of the of the doc but i i it feels like we if we really are serious about wanting to leave to, to, to your point louis if you want to be serious about leaving the door open for future interrupt because i agree i don't think we are as a project um currently staffed to, to do that right now. But if you want to leave the door open, then we have to be very conscious about not piling on or making architectural decisions that don't pile on this extra arcane, it's just specific knowledge. Um, so, you know, messing the pod IP and not service. Okay. Why? You know, can, 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 can we, you know, is, is there a way for us to discard a lot of these Istio isn't specifically, you can only know this sort of information if you happen to know how Istio works or if you're talking to Istio D. Can we find a way to discard some of these things so that we actually have an interoperable protocol by the time, or yeah, an inter interoperable protocol, an interoperable mesh by the time we're finished with all of well, this? Right, there is no definition of interoperable mesh. Right, like we can have interoperability for certain use cases. But like nobody's saying that like WDS is an interoperability standard. Nobody's trying to say that. Right? Z tunnel looks like a CNI. It looks like a layer four network that happens to support bump in the wire cases. It uses HBone, right? As an implementation detail. Like it could have used WireGuard. There are reasons why it didn't. It could have used God knows what protocol, but it didn't. 
Uh, and that, those, that does allow for some interop when, but it's not standard interop. It's interop in the sense that that client would have to learn a WDS and deal with everything else to interop with Istio, right? That's Istio interop, right? It's not a standard interop. And so we've got to be careful to distinguish between those two things, right? And like, we have to do workloads. Istio does workloads. It's never not going to do workloads for some definition of what workloads mean. Um, you know, there's a debate about whether we do bump in the wire to workloads or not by a waypoint and how and how complex that is. There's a lot, you know, there are arguments for and against that. We haven't resolved that. You know, I certainly have my own leanings on that point. But that's different than a specific interop use case. Like we want to interop end-to-end -end identity through a gateway for ingress to enable you to call a Kafka from a browser. There, interrupt matters, right? And we have to be standards based, otherwise forget it, right? Because we don't control the browsers. But there are different types of interrupt, right? Interrupt is not this universal uniform thing. And there is no definition of mesh interrupt. Looks like there's no definition of CNI interrupt. And we're allowed to make statements about what we're willing to support and not support on that front. And so like, we need to be careful not to be overly broad, right, with, with these requirements. That's that's totally fair. That's totally fair. And I think I think it goes back a bit to the conversation about whether or not waypoints, uh, like whether or not we have a requirement um, for, I completely forgot where I was going with that. But yes, I, in general, I agree, yes. Like, I think it's a good idea for us, to, for at least in some situations, to provide interrupt that's based on the stack of DNS, HBone, right, which is just HTTP Connect, and X509, right? That's a that's an industry standard-ish stack like LAMP would be. Um, and we can interrupt right with that for certain use cases, but not for all. So we could enumerate what those use cases are. So effectively, if I'm understanding it right, HBone, if you support HBone as a client, that just means you can connect to something that Istio may have a listener for. It doesn't mean you can do any specific thing that Istio may or may not support. It just means you can right. connect as a client, basically. And that's it. And that, yeah. that's fine. That just, yeah, that needs to be clear, I think. Because we sometimes use HBone to refer interchangeably to the implementation that we have and also the actual connection protocol. Right. So like, like even just like, like, like a, a Kubernetes service with a waypoint, how would you interoperate that with a non-standard or non-Istio based right. client? Yeah. Because today we don't re don't rewrite the DNS. The only way that would work is to rewrite the DNS, right? To point the resolution of the service name at the waypoint listener effectively. Um, so we have an interop gap there for a specific use case. And we could look to bridge, but it brings its own set of complexities, right? Yep. I think we don't have that problem at Ingress, which is why Ingress is probably likely to be the first target, because we're already, like, we don't do anything to internal DNS. We tell people they, they have to go set up external DNS to a gateway. That gateway has to be HBone compliant, then it works, right? So there's a, a, a smaller gap there to show use case interrupt. Um, being a bit more pragmatic, a good way to prove out some of this is the sandwich discussion around sidecar. Because the more, the, let's say we had an Envoy sandwiched on top of Z-Tunnel, and we can forget about how, the less Envoy has to know about control planes, the more it could depend on DNS the easier it would be for somebody else to do the same thing, right? The more likely it would be to work. Um, I doubt that we'll be able to do that in the first attempt at it, but we might be able to get there, right? Maybe in addition to DNS evolving a bit, but because then like Envoy doesn't have to know about the waypoint. Not really, Z-Tunnel deals with that problem for it. Um, And at least we're able to show people, hey, you know, you can 
you can go do your own sandwich. Right, and here's how you'd set up your own sandwich, which is basically what we tell people to do in VMs, right? So, right, DIY sandwich, like socks proxy with Z tunnel in the VM is a sandwich. And if we get the added bonus of the envoy becomes a lot easier because it has like, then that's probably a good thing overall. Um, there, there were a couple of thumbs up to doing a, a doc on sandwiches. Um, does anybody feel like they had the bandwidth for that? I think it's, and it, it mostly boils down to what can we take out of Envoy if we had a sandwich? Uh, Stephen, yeah, if you, if you don't mind taking a stab at that, that, that would be great. Like there's a lot of stuff in Envoy that could go away, which would be nice, right? And if the appendix explained the difference between a sandwich and a hairpin, I would be much obliged. That does not make happen, but uh, also it'd be interesting to mention the benefits for Envoy in general to use, not necessarily call it sandwich, but call it, you know, an egress proxy or, a, you know, forward proxy or a SOX proxy or whatever you want to call it, because, you know, it's, Z tunnel is not the only socks or 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 uh, you know egress proxy. Um, yes, I, I mean right now sandwich discussions are somewhat hypothetical. Um, John points out a good point that yes, we anywhere we're adding hops, we're going to have to pay for them somehow. So. Uh, but there are different, there are many different types of sandwiches, hot dogs, hamburgers, open faced tuna sandwiches. We can, we can, we can discuss that as well. <laughs> um, and yeah, no commitment to implement them either. A hot dog is a sandwich. Come on. All right, should we wrap this up? Sounds like uh, at least we identify action item. <laughs> Stephen will help us run the Donald Khan sandwich. I want to ask because we did talk about coming to or trying to come to a decision on forward proxy this week, which we've, I think, talked about just from a very different angle than we spoke about last week. Is that decision urgent or, or is this something we can afford to continue discussing? Um, I believe John and I were supposed to volunteer to go and try and thrash something out for further review. Um, I have not had time to do that, unfortunately. I didn't that, that's right. That, but, that's uh, a, yes, I, I would describe I would describe it as pressing. How about that? Okay. And then just a friendly reminder for those who joined late, all of the meetings next week are on a new calendar. The old invites will not work. The docs are being updated. GitHub is being updated. Uh, if you have any questions about how to access that calendar, please let me know, and I'd be happy to help out. Um, also, yes, I saw a third one popped up, and it doesn't require permission to join, which is a miracle. Mm. Yes, and at least TOC members can kick off recordings. I, I'm, I'm hoping that others will be able to as well, but still working on that. All right. Everybody go think about your favorite sandwich for lunch <laughs> slash mid-afternoon snack, unless it's a hot dog in case it's not a sandwich. And I guess go read ECH and the RFC. Is that what you're saying, Custom? Oh, God. All right. Thanks.